he had Mikroski Dolos in um, on the Pasuk Lechovolus for us. You should make the holy vestments for honor and Tiferis and for glory. So we hear he says, What is the meaning? What is Hashem's intent? Intentionally, he says, If once he's already explained the purpose, and to tell us that this is to glorify Aaron himself, to give him honor and glory, what's the value of that for us to know this? Besides the Gemara I mentioned yesterday in Avodah Zorah, Zelashona, Sholo Shrebi Akiva, Yes Shrebi Akiva, Shimesh, Kol Shiv Shmei Amiluim, what did Moshe, what did he wear when he officiated for the seven days of the Mishkan? Lahava Biode, Reb Kiva himself didn't know. Also, he showed him So he went to ask in the base Medrash, Omlu Lei Becholak Lovum, Shebo Imro, Adkan. So they answered him, he wore a white tunic, which did not have a hem. So he says, from the Gemara, it's indicated that the special vestments, which do not allow the avoda to be valid, that's only something which is relevant to Aaron and his children. But if you're not a Kohen, even if the garment, it, one doesn't wear that special garment, the avoda is valid. You should understand that the vestments are not shown only for the sake of avoda to serve. It's only for the one who said as the permanent officiant. And now he says, This is what I want you to see. The vestments that Aaron wore, four were white, were linen vestments, and four were gold. Right? And Yom Kippur, when he did the service of the Holy of Holies, he wore four vestments, Aaron. It's only during the year he wore eight, four were were white and four were gold. Four are for Kavod and the other four are for Tiferis. Yeah, this, this is very important. The linen garments are for Kavod. The gold garments are Tiferis. Pirish al pi divre zal sets the Zohar. The white garments, linen garments, they correspond to Yud Kevavke. Yud Kevavke is the Midas Arachmin. They correspond to the name of Adni, Master. Four letters. Four letters Yud Kevavke. Those are the white vestments. And the gold vestments, which are four, Correspond to Adni, Veda Kishim Avaya Barhu Yaches, Ail of Kinui, Hatiferis. Yudke Vovke is Tiferis, Kiodua, which is known based on the Zohar. That's the ultimate, that's like the glorif glorification of Hashem. Shem Adni is Yachste of Kinui Hakovot. Who Omer of Sisa Big Day Kodish, the Kovot Keneg Big Day Zov. Kovot is honor, is the gold vestments. That's Adni. Tiferes can be the love on the Seda Kosov, Seda Hadrogus Hakadusha Zulamal Mizu, the Higdim Lukovot. So we're speaking about, we're going from one level of Kadusha to the next. First, the Zov corresponds to what? To Adni, which that name of Hashem doesn't have the same degree of Kadusha as Yud Kevavke. Vohove, the Tzivola Hashem Lasa Shmoda Begodim, Shemitsusam Yiskaper. And he says, why does he have to wear those garments? 
to atone for the deficiencies and the blemishes which people do through their sins, which affect the higher echelons of Kedusha, and through these garments represent the Adni and Yudke Vavke, they achieved that level of Kapora. Because the function of the Kohen was to bring Kapora for Klal Yisro. We'll see that was not the function of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was to establish the location. It should be a location that can bring about atonement. He was not the one who actually atoned for the Jewish people. Our own, he was the one who atoned. This, we're able to understand to discern between the avod of Moshe and the avod of Aaron. The Gemara tells us that the eight vestments, each one atoned for another sin of the Jewish people. Therefore, these vestments had to be worn by our and his children because their function and their purpose was to bring about atonement for Klal Yisrael. Moshe that that Moshe officiated for the seven days of the inauguration of the Mishkan. Yeah, this, this was a kapor for Aaron and his children, that they should be qualified to be the officiants to, offic- to atone for the Jewish people. To initiate them, that they should be able to be qualified to serve Hashem. It was not to atone for these particular sins. To atone for these particular sins, this was Aaron Ubanov. Therefore, for him, it wasn't necessary to wear the vestments that Aaron and his sons had worn. Because that's to atone for the particular sins of the Jewish people. But Moshe, he was just to officiate, to qualify, to atone for Aaron and his children, which have no relevance to these sins which the eight vestments correspond to. Therefore, he didn't need those eight vestments. It was enough just to wear the white tunic. That's how he's explaining the posuk. You should speak to those who are who have wisdom of the heart. And why do they have wisdom of the heart? Because I filled their hearts with the spirit of wisdom. And you should make the vestments of our own to sanctify him. And he they should be qualified as the Kohen, as the Fishian for me, on my behalf. So Rashi explains what's Lakacho. This will initiate him to enter into the kuna through these garments. She coinly that he should be classified, established as a kohen. Loshen kuna sherasu. The meaning of the word kuna means to be an efficient. To, to initiate him to be qualified to be the efficient. So this famous word from Rav Chaim Velozhno, the Gemara says, to whose heart did Hashem give Ruach Chochmah? I mean, these people who have no background to be qualified to have any ability in these areas, to be able to develop and create what they created, it's into the hearts that had wisdom, I gave the spirit of wisdom. So who had wisdom of the heart? What does it mean? In the hearts of all those who had wisdom of the heart, I gave wisdom. So Rav Chaim Velashim writes, Nef Shechayim, that Dovre writes, Reish Chochme Yerush Hashem. 
what is the fundamental, what is the basis, the foundation of wisdom? Yir Hashem. So meaning the person who had Yir Shemayim, to the degree that he had Yir Hashem, that is the degree that Hashem gave the Rachachma. Now, it's very interesting. The Gemara tells us that before, before a child is conceived, an angel takes that droplet of semen and brings it before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and he pronounces on that droplet, Chochem Otipesh, will he be wise or foolish? Gibor or Cholosh, strong or weak? Osher or Oni, wealthy or poor? Every pronouncement of that person's life is pronounced the destiny of that child who's going to be conceived. So Mar says, what about Tzadik Barosho? But the pronouncement of Tzadik Rosho, that pronouncement is not made. Why? So Mar says, because everything's predestined except for Yerushalayim. Where the person's a Tzadik or Rosho, that's left up to the person, that he has the ability through his own initiative to go in either direction. Therefore, that pronouncement is not made. So therefore, when it says, in the heart of all Chachmei Leiv, in the hearts of all those who have wisdom of the heart, so that you have wisdom of the heart, that's not an endowment. That's something which comes back through one's own initiative. Do you have Yerushalayim? Don't you have Yerushalayim? So to the degree of Yerushalayim that a person had, to that degree, Hashem is released Ruach Chochmah. But if a person did not have Yerushalayim, that person didn't qualify to what? To be the vessel to be filled with the spirit of what? Of Chochmah. To, to be able to have this ability. Okay, now we had said and we explained that the reason why Moshe, the difficulty Moshe had in making the menorah wasn't in, in its physicality. That every vessel, because it corresponds to, to an aspect of creation, the intent of creation had to be infused in that particular vessel. And because the menorah represents Torah Malpeh, which has, which is infinite, because it represents the wisdom of Hashem, the only one who could infuse that vessel with that appropriate kavana intent was only Hashem himself. So we're not talking about the physicality of the what, of the particular component or item that we're talking about. And therefore the Gemara says, why was B'Tzalel qualified to oversee the Mishkan? So the Gemara says in Brochos, because B'Tzalel HaYodeh L'Tzarif Osios, he was able to conjugate the letters of the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, which creation came about through those letters, through the energies of those letters. Therefore, he was qualified to oversee the Mishkan. I mean, what is being qualified, understanding the conjugation of letters, which were about creation, what roles does that have to the Mishkan? So as we explained, because whatever energies which were released to bring about the existence at every level those same energies had to be infused within the Mishkan and had to produce the same result. For that, you had to know how to conjugate Letzarif Osios. So we speak about Chachme Leiv, that they receive Ruach Chochma. The Ruach Chochma, the spirit of Chochma, is not only in the physicality of the item. They were in touch with the understanding of what each vessel represented to when they were instructed that relevance to be able to infuse that vessel with that particular intent. Every component of the Mishkan, that's Ruach Chochma. Now, what's interesting, we find that, and the Rabbeinu Bachi makes this point, Yosef, he was taken out of the dungeon. He interprets the dreams of Pharaoh, and after he interprets the dreams, and he tells him there's going to be seven years of famine, seven years of plenty, seven years of famine, what the dream represents, and immediately has a solution. And he explains to him how exactly to deal with all the issues. During the years of plenty, what do you do with the grain and how it should be stored away and how it should be distributed and so on and so forth. And if you follow this plan, you will save the country. Otherwise, the country will perish in the famine. Paro was no ordinary person. Paro says to his all his courtiers, and his wise man, he says, have you ever seen a person, Asher Ruach Elokimbo? Have you ever seen a person who has the spirit of God within him? This is 
divine genius. This is not human genius. This is Ruach Elohim. I mean, Yosef, by being able to display what he displayed within moments, this is not, Paro never saw such a thing in his life. And Paro was the monarch of the most advanced civilization. He had to do with every, the most advanced echelons of, of existence on many levels. This he never saw before. And he says, the only way to understand this, this is Ruach Elokimbo. That's the spirit of Elokim. That's where the wisdom emanates from. We find over here the people who participate in the Mishkan to build the Mishkan. It's because it says, I should be lace of Ruach Chochma. I fill them with Ruach Chochma, with the wisdom, with the spirit of Chochma. That's why they have this ability, we said, in the physical sense and the spiritual sense, understanding the value of each component and what it has to be infused with for that reason. And these are the vestments. Ashayasu, Choshen, the Ephod, Umil, Sonis Tashbait, Mitznefis, the Avnait. But also be they coach Laron or Chicho. So these are the vestments, and they should make them with the intent, these holy garments for Aaron, your brother, Ulavanov, Lachalani. <coughs> okay. So Rashi goes to explain what, what each of these items were. Rabbi. Wait one second. So here the Balaturim explains there's one of the vestments which are not mentioned. The tzitz. Right? The tzitz was that gold plate which the coin godel wore on his forehead. That said, Kodesh Lashem. Why is that mentioned? So if you look in the Balatur, it's a, these are the garments. So he says, Lo hizkir mechnosayim fishinem al-chavur tiferes. The mechnosayim are not mentioned because it says these vestments are for honor and for glory. And this that's really to cover the generals of the Kohen. That's what the pants represented. Lohiskir tzitz, as the tzitz, which is gold, which is the ultimate, it's his, kov, it's his kodesh lashem, shlohoyim min deged. Because it wasn't cloth, it wasn't woven, it was, a, it was just a piece of gold that was hammered out and it was, it had the letters kodesh lashem. That, therefore, it's the, the mechsaimah not mentioned, the pants and the gold plate, which Kohen God wore on his forehead. So over here, wrap up. One second. Old near a key tam shama Hashem, the ape sukim, able gimu psukim, vato. The three psuk words is out and you. He will not say slow mala be gimu for him. The Moshe Rambeinu should have relevance to these three areas. The Nidvas Hamishkan, the Chloseo, Echod, that you. What was donated to the Mishkan in general? Umlechsa Mishkan Vikalov, the service of the Mishkan and its vessels, Ubigde Kuna Echod. Avot Bis Migdush Echod. Voma Shemelov. Hu no tail schar kilu hu osa kol. Hashem wants that every person who involved in every aspect of the Mishkan. They should be the equivalent of the agent of Moshe. The Moshe should be should actually be accredited for being involved in every aspect of the Mishkan. Ato, A, B, C. That meaning all these craftsmen who are involved, they're being actually they're acting as the agents of Moshe Rabbeinu. So since we have a concept known as the Shlich Shom a person's agent equivalent himself. All the credit accrues to Moshe Rabbeinu. Of course, the ones who do it, they're doing it also. 
their beneficiaries what they're doing. But since Moshe is the one who's instructing them, he's telling them, so it should, all the reward should accrue to him. They should bring to you. You're the one who's responsible. They should bring it. And they will be bring it to you to do it. All these people are only the agents of Moshe Rabbeinu. That all the actions and all the activities on the Mishkan, every aspect of it, it's your shlichus. They're your agents. It's the equivalent as if Moshe himself was involved in making all parts of the Mishkan. It's Aaron. That the Kohanim, Aaron and his sons, they are the equivalent, they are doing the service on your behalf, as if they're your agents. Therefore, all three aspects of the Mishkan are attributed to Moshe Rabbeinu. The mitzvah is incumbent on him. Every aspect of the Mishkan is incumbent on Moshe Rabbeinu. All these various people involved, they are ag- they're Moshe's agents. Why? Because Hashem wants that he should be accredited as if he did everything, that he is the equivalent. Okay? It's very interesting. Now, why? What is Mo- why does he want Moshe be the one to be the beneficiary of the totality of the Mishkan? Same, he said Moshe is such a special person. He did so much. Hashem wants to reward him. Or maybe it's a little different. We say that Moshe Rabbeinu was the only one who was qualified to receive the Torah. We had said that there was a critical mass number which had to be at Sinai that they should be worthy to receive the Torah, which was the totality of, of, of Klaung Show. 600,000 males above the age of 20. Only when they, when they reached that critical mass were they qualified to receive the Torah. Rabbeinu Bachi says in Parshish Vayigash, why he asked the question, why did that Kodesh Baruch will give the Torah to Yaakov and his children? Why did he have to wait until after Yitzhiz Mitzrayim, until after we left Egypt? The most special family in the history of the Jewish people was Yaakov and his children. See, he answers, because the number of 600,000 males above the, above the age of 20, that's the critical mass. It's not to be qualified as just as people, meaning because of your tzitkos, because of your righteousness, you have to have the numbers. And you have to have that total, the totality of number for the Torah to be given. Okay? Who was Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu was Shokel connected to Israel. He was the only Jew ever that his soul was the equivalent of the entire Kalal Yisrael. So when Moshe Rabbeinu went to receive the Torah on behalf of Kalal Yisrael, his soul, his neshub was the totality of Klal Yisrael. Understand? The Mishkan has to be built by Klal Yisrael. By, Klal, by, Klal, by the whole Jewish people. Therefore, every one of them being Moshe's agents, they are the equivalent of representing Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the totality of Klal Yisrael is actually participating in the building of the Mishkan. The morale says something unbelievable. We find that Moshe Rabbeinu, when there were murmurings against him, they were suspect of Ishish, that he had his eye on their wives. And it says that the Jews, they forewarned their wives, stay away from Moshe. Could you imagine? Moshe Rabbeinu, he's radiating holiness. Moshe Rabbeinu brought the Torah to the Jewish people at Sinai. He split the sea, did the ten makos. They're, they're suspecting Moshe that maybe he has his eye on their wife. And therefore, they forewarn their wife, stay away from Moshe Rabbeinu. So the morale explains that Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama was the totality of Klal Yisrael. 
There's nothing more intimate in a, a human being than his soul. The soul is the core, the essence of the person. They didn't understand that there was this level of attachment between Moshe's neshama and the neshama of every Jew. Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama had to do with the neshama of every Jew of Klal Yisrael. As a result of that, the husband sense that the, a connection with Moshe Rabbeinu, even their wives, because that's a connection between Moshe and every Jew. That's the reason. That's how the morale explains why they were they, they were mekana. They actually forewarned their wives because they felt there was some level of attachment between Moshe and the women. This is the morale in Gvurs Hashem. That's who explains it. Moshe Rabbeinu, the Mishkan has to be made, has to be created by Klal Yisrael. Every Jew who was involved, since he's an agent of Moshe Rabbeinu, and Moshe Rabbeinu is Klal Yisrael, therefore, as a result of that, he's the one who had actually made the Mishkan. As a result of that, all the credit accrues to him. That's the way I understand it. We find, this is Sifarno at Bini Gishmos, it says, when all the Jews were borrowing the silver and gold vessels, what was Moshe Rabbeinu doing? He was taking out the Atzmos Yosef. Because Yosef had adjured his brothers that when they leave, they have to take him out. So we asked, what about Ephraim and Nasha? As every other Shevet, their descendants took them out, Ephraim and Nasha could take them out. But Yosef says, no, the Jewish people have to take him out. Why? Because this was a correction on what? On the Chiris Yosef, selling him into slavery. This had this had to, this was like a re reunification of the Jewish people. So the question is, who took who took them? Who, what were what were all the other Jews doing? They were busy borrowing silver and gold. It was Moshe took them out? So the so the Sephardo says Moshe. But who's Moshe? Moshe is the Melech Yisrael. He's the equivalent of the king. He represents the entire Jewish people. So Moshe took out the Atzmas Yosef. It was the equivalent of the whole Jewish people taking out the Atzmas Yosef. Therefore, he met the, the oath that he had adjured them that they must take him out. He was the equivalent of the whole Jewish people taking him out. That's the Sepharno in the portion of Shmos. But we're adding to it. It's even more so that since the Neshama Moshe Rabbeinu is the equivalent of Klal Yisrael, and that's why he was the Melech, he was the king, he is the equivalent of the whole Jewish people. Therefore, that meant the oath that Yosef had adjured his brothers that they all must take him out. When they take out their own remains, his remains must be taken out together with theirs. Rabbi, so that's the case with Moshe. <clears throat> what you're asking. Hey, Alan, I'll ask you a question. The question is, Rabbi, if, if, if the artisans and all the Kali Yisrael were building the Mishkan as Shalichim for Moshe Rabbeinu, it says at the end that he was sad and depressed that he, he wasn't involved with the building of the Mishkan. The Medrash. The Medrash says, he says he was, Moshe Rabbeinu was glum. And after the Mishkan was built, Hashem says, why are you so down? He says, because I didn't participate in the building of the Mishkan. So Hashem says, your participation will be greater than theirs. Why? Because they may have built the Mishkan, but you're going to erect the Mishkan. Because unless you erect it, it doesn't, doesn't happen. It doesn't function as a Mishkan. But you're asking a good question. But if every one of them was the, the Shliach Moshe Rabbeinu, he built the whole Mishkan, right? So Mar says, Mitzvah Bo Yosef B'Shlucho, that if you're able to delegate something or you're able to do it yourself, where is it better to do? It's better to do it yourself, not to delegate it. Mitzvah Bo Yosef B'Shlucho. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't have that on hands, his hands on. He wasn't hands on. He instructed them. The instruction is not the equivalent of that. But in terms of what Hashem wanted to accomplish, that it should be considered connected to him. It, because he is the representation of the total quality. So that, that was accomplished. But factually, he was not involved. Hashem says, your involvement, hands-on, would be greater than theirs. Because you're going to have the Akomas HaMishka.